Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday worship. Let us begin our time together in prayer. Lord, you are our light and our salvation, our hope in times of fear. You protect us at times of danger and you hear our prayers. So Lord, we seek your face and we trust in your goodness. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. Peter will now bring us our Bible reading, followed by the talk. Good morning. Today's reading is from Luke 13, reading from verses 31 to 35. Jesus' love for Jerusalem. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, you must get out of here and go somewhere else, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus answered them, Go and tell that fox, I am driving out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall finish my work. Yet I must be on my way today, tomorrow and the next day. It is not right for a prophet to be killed anywhere except in Jerusalem. Jerusalem! Jerusalem, you kill the prophets, you stone the messengers God has sent you. How many times have I wanted to put my arms around all your people, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not let me. And so your temple will be abandoned. I assure you that you will not see me until the time comes when you say, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I'm sure we've all experienced times when we've gone to bed and we just haven't been able to close our eyes. We feel restless. We feel anxious. We are worrying about the next day. We are worrying about a member of the family. We are worrying about something in work and we just cannot rest. Well, I've no doubt that Jesus experienced the same because we are told he was fully God, but also fully human. And so if he was fully human, he experienced all the things that we experienced. And we are told that he would be visited by Pharisees and the loss of these Pharisees would feel threatened by him because Jesus was wanting to change the status quo. And none of us like a change in the status quo. But some Pharisees felt as if they were warming towards him, including Nicodemus. They were listening to what he had to say. They were watching him as he brought healing into people's lives. There was something about this Jesus of Nazareth. But Jesus was told that a price had been put on his head. They wanted to kill him, get rid of him. I've no doubt that would bring him many restless nights. Who wouldn't feel anxious if they got that news? So how did Jesus cope with the anxieties and the worries and the challenges of daily life? Well, we are told that he would often go off to a place by himself and pray. No doubt, like us, he would have conflicting voices in his head. Some voices bringing him encouragement, other voices challenging him, putting him down, telling him he was rubbish, telling him that he wasn't going in the right direction. But he needed to put aside those voices and find a way of listening to the voice of God, which he did by reading scripture and also in times of prayer. And each one of us need to do that. We need to push away from ourselves those crowded uh, voices in our mind and we need to listen and focus upon the word of God that will always bring us encouragement and a sense of strength. But also Jesus would remind himself of what he was here to do. He was here to bring about God's kingdom to people's lives. And wherever God is in his kingdom, there is love, justice and peace. And they were the hallmarks of Jesus' ministry. He would spend his time with those on the fringes of society. He would bring healing to people and encouragement to people. All the good qualities that come from God and his kingdom. Now, I remember many years ago being told by a bishop then wherever you feel as if things are getting on top of you, when you are hearing all these different conflicting opinions, just go and have a cup of tea with someone. Don't talk to them about this. Just receive the encouragement that you know they will give you. And thankfully I have a number of people like this who will just encourage me. And we all need that as well, don't we? And so we need to be reminded of why we are here. And we need to be encouraged by people in what we're here to do, to go out and bring God's qualities and values to other people's lives, just like Jesus did. But then another thing that helped Jesus was his commitment to the ultimate goal of his ministry, bringing God's compassion to people's lives. And in our reading, we hear his love and his passion for the people of Jerusalem, his love and his passion for each one of us. It was a love and passion that would take him to the cross. It was a love and passion that would lead him in living a selfless life. But we need to remember this, that is the ultimate goal of our Christian life. And Lent is a season when we prepare ourselves in those ways, pushing aside selfless thoughts, selfless acts to do something and be someone for other people and so whenever we are restless whenever we are anxious we need to find a way of listening to the word of God we need to be reminded that 
going out and bringing God's healing and love to other people's lives will help us be who we're called to be. And we need to also remember that just like Jesus, we are called to live a selfless life, living in the love and compassion of God's kingdom. Amen. We sing our next hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say, power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Save us, O Lord, from the darkness all around us, from the darkness within our own hearts, from the noontide danger and the shadows of the night. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. In all areas of unresolved conflict in our troubled world, where deep-seated grievances and complex history collide, where shattered lives and destroyed cities are the evidence for our wars, and we feel helpless at so much brokenness. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In political decision-making on energy, security, aid and sanctions, where true leadership and wisdom matter, where government should meet the needs and not the wants of the people, when costly decisions are needed and self-interest needs to be set aside for the good of others. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In freezing temperatures, as snow falls, when the homeless refugees and frightened families shiver in distress, when our visa policy is too complex and bureaucratic, when, in our relatively affluent country, some go hungry and many with homes are struggling to stay warm amid rising energy costs. We know change is needed. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In our relative security and safety in this country, 
where we are tempted to trust in our own strength, when our compassion fails, when we lack the imagination to walk in the shoes of the dispossessed, we lose sight of our own dependence on you. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In the tangled conflicts at home, school or work in which we are trapped, when we cannot give in and the desire to win is greater than our search for a resolution, soften our stubborn hearts, we pray. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In the absence of safety and home, when refugees flee to the borders in the pauses between shelling, when a humanitarian crisis is building and families are torn apart and we fear the fresh horrors of the news, God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. In all our dreams and longings, where freedom itself is at stake, and we yearn for a better, fairer and kinder world. Teach us to seek your face and listen to your voice in all our ways and for all our days. God of our hope, we place our trust in you. Help us to walk in your light. Save us, O Lord, from the darkness all around us, from the darkness within our own hearts, from the noontide danger and the shadows of the night. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us celebrate this week's birthdays, followed by the gallery. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
let us continue in our prayers for Ukraine. Lord of all people and all nations, we lift before you the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia, each girl and boy, each woman and man living in fear of what tomorrow might bring. We long for a time you spoke of through your prophet Isaiah, when weapons of war would be beaten into plowshares, when nation will no longer lift up sword against nation. We cry out to you for peace. Protect those who only desire and deserve to live in security and safety. Comfort those who fear for their lives and the lives of their loved ones. Change the heart of those set on violence and aggression. Fill earthly leaders with great wisdom to find paths of peace. Please Lord, come and have your way in your world. May your will be done here, on earth as it is in heaven. May your peace reign now and always. We lift this prayer to you, our God, who is able to do more than we can ever ask or imagine. In the name of Christ our Saviour. Amen. We sing our final hymn, Guard me, O thou great Redeemer. Let us pray. Teach me, Lord God, to live out my faith, to show courage when things are tough, to show love to those in need, and to be forgiving even when I am hurt. Help me to follow Jesus. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.